know that coaches of all kinds are needed now more than ever before? Hi, I'm Pam Peebles, but my clients call me Coach Pam. I'm the founder and the head coach at Freedom Coaching Academy for women. I've been in the coaching game for over 30 years, and during that time, I've helped thousands of women build, launch, and scale their businesses to six, seven, and even eight-figure coaching empires. If you want to make an amazing income, live anywhere you want in the world, all while impacting lives, then you're in the right place because I'll show you how to make it happen. This is Scale to 7 with me, Coach Pam. All right, guys, welcome back to Scale to 7 with me, Coach Pam. For somebody who may be um, a little bit more involved than you are in your niche or industry. All right, now let's talk a little bit about mastering your knowledge and how you can become the master of your knowledge. So here's the thing. It's real important to learn everything about your niche, right? We want to do that, but we don't want to just learn it. We want to nail that shit. We want to be the master of our universe. We want to be the coach. We want to be the person. We want to be the initial person that someone thinks of when they're looking for X to help them, all right? So when it comes to building a six or seven figure coaching business, I want you to think of me. When you're ready to expand your coaching empire and add additional services, add a mastermind, be able to simplify the process, be able to scale, I want you to think of me. So I want you to think of what is the one thing that you wanna be thought of for? What is it? What is that niche? Because there's a big difference between having general knowledge and specialized knowledge, okay? Remember, I used the example of the surgeon. I mean, any surgeon can go in and stitch somebody up from, you know, a cut. But not every surgeon can go in and operate on a premature baby and stitch up their heart. I mean, maybe he could. I don't know. I'm not a surgeon. But I wouldn't want him on my baby, okay? You can't touch my baby because you in the hospital, you know, stitching up cuts from car accident. I don't want you working on my premature baby. Where did that come from? Lord help me. So, but my point is we want someone who has a specialized knowledge and that you are able to dive deep and figure out what that knowledge is for you. And that's how you become a true expert. You are focused on learning everything that comes up about it. There's a, a training, you go to it. There's a program where they're teaching a new way to do something for your niche. You go to it. Every time something comes up, you know all about it because that's your game, right? You are the LeBron James of that coaching niche. And that's how you have to think about about it, y'all. You have to think about it like, how do I make myself stand out while everyone else is focused on blending in, right? And I know years ago, I know a lot of coaches who kind of went through this whole thing of, I'm going to stand out because I'm going to dye my hair pink or I'm going to dye my hair purple. I mean, if it works for you, it works for you. But just because you got purple hair to me doesn't mean that you're badass. It doesn't mean that you're a better coach. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that you dyed your hair purple because you want to stand out or you're going through midlife crisis. I don't but the reality is I want to know the coach. I want to work with the coach who is consistently generating six figures a month, seven figures a month. I want to work with the coach who is having that type of success. I don't want to work with somebody that's just trying to prove to me that they're cool or that, you know, they hang out with cool kids just because they have pink hair or purple hair or whatever. I want someone who is the best in their game. And that's what you should want too. And that's what your clients are looking for. They're looking for someone who's the top of their game and who is a true expert in their niche. So think about it this way. If we want to be a rock star, we don't want to be a rock star just, you know, in name. We don't want to be a rock star in because we got, you know, spiky hair or colored hair or anything. We don't even want to be a rock star because of the clothes we wear. I want to be known as a rock star because of the shit that I do, because of the transformations that I make, because of my clients who are making six figures a month, who are making, you know, high five figures a month. I want to be known because of the results that I get. And I want that to be part of my brand identity. I want my identity to be that she helps women overcome their obstacles, overcome self-sabotage, overcome the imposter syndrome. I want to be known as the coach who advocates for other women coaches, right? So you have to think about what is your brand identity? What will people know you for? How will you be able to build your business being someone who blends in versus someone who stands out. And you and I both know, if you've been in this industry for a minute, you and I both know that everybody in their mom is a life coach. You can't, yeah, I shouldn't have said it like that, but that's the truth. Everyone is a life coach, right? How do you stand out? How do you not blend in with the other 10,000 certified life coaches? Because someone told you to get a certification. 
and that if you had one, that you would make more money and that you would be different. Lies, right? Because now everybody in the mama has a certification. So now what, right? Now you've paid fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to get a certification as a life coach and you still don't know what your niche is. You're still no different than the other people who also pay some ridiculous amount of money to get their certification and still don't have a clue how to get clients. Insane. But that's what people are being told. That's where folks are being led. So what if you were the coach who led them down the right path? What if you were the coach that said, listen, you don't need any of that shit to be successful. Um, having a certification is not going to help you get sales. You know, that's about as ridiculous as telling someone that they need a degree in order to be able to make seven figures a year. And yet people used to say that. And I am one of the people who have proved them wrong over and over and over again. So it really comes down to how do you want to set the stage, right? What do you want to, what do you want to be known for? What do you want your legacy to say about you? Do you want it to be that you just blended in, that you just made a little bit of money? Or do you want to walk away knowing that you made a huge impact on thousands of lives, that you've made an impact on helping people change their life or their business? You really have to think about what that brand identity looks like. I mean, you want it to be memorable. Of course, we're looking at logos. We're looking at your color palette. We're looking at your brand voice. But ultimately, it still comes down to your message, right? Your marketing message. What does that look like? What does your marketing message say about you? Because when you have a compelling brand identity and a compelling marketing message, it's game over. It is game over. You don't have to worry about finding clients. They will find you. And not only will they find you, but they will track you down. They will track you down and they will want to know how they can work with you. And that's what positioning is. It is positioning when we create this marketing message and we create this persona for ourselves that's true, that shows people that we care, that we want to collaborate, that we want to help them change their life or business. When we do all of these things, we become the hero in the story. So that's what I really want you to focus on when we're talking about drilling down your niche and how to make riches in your niches is making sure that you are the it. You are the person. You are the it coach. And another way that you really can do that and another way that you should do that is in your message. So I talked about that briefly for a second, but your marketing message, it has to be compelling, right? It cannot be just like, oh, I help people make money. Well, you're not going to help me. So I want you to have some specialized skill. What are you going to do to help me make money, right? How are you going to help me make seven figures? If my goal is to make seven figures per month, what do you do? What do you do that's different from other people? What is it that you offer that other folks are not offered? I need to know these things, right? Because if I'm investing my money with you, then I need to know how you're going to help me make this transformation. You have to be able to communicate that in your message. You have to be the coach that says, hey, this is what I do. This is how my clients get results. This is what we do to help our clients make more money in their business. This is what we do to help our clients lose weight. You have to communicate that message because this is how you attract your clients. And if your marketing message is off, it's going to be really difficult for you to get clients. OK, so we want to make sure that as we're putting all that together, it becomes part of our elevator pitch that I am I do statement that I talk about frequently. And that just means that you are able to communicate to people who you are and what it is that you do. And this is important always, not just when you're meeting someone who could be a potential client, but just in communicating with people, just in creating relationships, just when having conversations. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've had a conversation with somebody just randomly who was like, oh my God, I need to introduce you to this person. So you want to make sure that you're taking the time to really practice your elevator pitch and that you are able to clearly communicate your niche expertise and the value that you bring to the table and make sure that your message clearly clearly resonates with your specific target audience, because this is where you're going to make the greatest impact in having this persuasive message. And this is where you're going to encourage your clients to take action. When you are able to say to them confidently, hey, I know how to resolve this problem because I've done it for other, 10 other clients. I consistently get results like this with my clients. I have done this a hundred times over. This guy makes someone feel real warm and fuzzy when it comes to making a buy-in decision with you, right? But if you're just unsure about what you're doing, if you're not sure how to share that message, and you're like, yeah, I can help you do that. And then cricket, listen, who wants to work with somebody that's not confident? I don't want to work with somebody that tells me they hope they can fix it. They hope they can change things. No, I wouldn't work with somebody that's confident. I'm like, oh, we got it. It's done. Consider it done. So I want you to really think about that when you're creating your marketing message, when you're putting all of this together, you have to make sure that your voice, meaning what you say, how you say it, everything, it just reeks confidence. 
confidence because that is what people are looking for. They're looking for somebody that has the ability to help them make the transformation. They're looking for someone who has the ability to help them change. And you have to be that person, okay? You have to be the one that gives them the reason why they should do this, that they should make this change right now, that they should make this adjustment, that they should make this leap of faith because for many, it is a leap of faith, especially if it's their first time working with a coach. So I want you to think of all of these things because this is where you're going to really be able to drill down and find your ideal clients quickly. So one of the last things that I want to talk to you guys about is, well, one of the next two last things, it might be a couple more, but is dominating your marketing niche. So I want you to think about, like for me, I'm on Facebook very heavily. I have a couple Facebook groups that I run, one for entrepreneurs, one for coaches. That's where my ideal clients are at. I have no problem finding them. Are they on LinkedIn? I'm sure they're on LinkedIn, but I tend to spend more of my time and energy on Facebook. So what I want you to do is know where your ideal client is. Where do they spend their time at? Because if your ideal client is not on Facebook and you're just spending all day over there, then guess what? You're not going to find them. So I want you to take the time time to look at marketing channels, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and find out where is your ideal client. And then I want you to nail that. Okay. I want you to spend all of your time creating that community. I want you to start building a rapport. I want you to start sharing success stories. I want you to really focus on making sure that that community understands that this is where you dominate. I want you to make sure they understand that this is where you dominate. And think about it this way. When you're able to tailor your programs because you have drilled down so tightly that you know exactly like like letter by letter, you know, step by step, how you can change someone's life or business through your system, it is going to make it so much easier because you're catering to what that niche needs specifically, what their goals are specifically, what their pain points are very specifically. And so it really changes how you're able to attract clients to you. And also not just that, but it allows you to have a more profound effect and lasting transformation on your clients because you are able to really take the time and build build that particular background for them. You're able to come up with solutions that are long-term. You're able to look into what it is that they know how to do and replicate that over and over as far as the success stories are concerned. Instead of just hoping because someone came to you and paid you some money that you can help them solve their problems. Maybe years ago, early in my career, I definitely took on clients that I had no business taking on because I wanted to help people and that's what I wanted to do. So I took on clients who were not a good fit for me, who definitely were not my ideal audience and ended up being a pain in the ass, not just for them, because I'm sure that, you know, it took me so much longer to help them because it was not something I specialize in. But it was also a pain in the ass for me because I found myself doing two to three times the amount of work because I wanted to make an impression on them. And it was not something that I specialized in. When I work with clients who are my ideal audience, who are my niche and who I can do it with my eyes closed, I don't have those issues. Like I am in my element when we're talking about coaching. I am in my zone when we're talking about making money, when we're talking about scaling the seven figures. This is what I can do all day long. Do not get me on a coaching call and you got free times because I will talk your ears off seriously. And it's because I love talking about different ways to empower women, to help them change their life, to help them grow their business. And so it's real easy for me to share tools and techniques and resources on what a woman can do in order to be able to become the go-to person in her coaching industry or in her niche. It's real simple for me to tell someone how to scale their business, how to be able to consistently make five or six figures per month on autopilot and to not have to spend 70 hours a week doing it. It's real easy for me to do these things because it is what I do. It is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and it's what I'm passionate about. So I want you to really think long and hard about what is the thing that you are passionate about? What is the thing that you know if you help someone do that they are going to have amazing results, that they are going to get the transformation that you promise to them and that they want, not just that you promise to them, but also that they want. What is it that you can do that you know you can do better than anyone else. Like you're going to have, I live in the South. So you're going to have somebody like, listen, can't nobody make sweet potato pie like me. Like I am the queen of making sweet potato pie. I am the queen of making pound cake or whatever it is. I want you to own that shit the same exact way. I want you to think about what is it the thing that you know you can transform for your clients in their life or business. And that's what you own. 
You put everything on it. You stake everything on it. You let people know, listen, with what I bring to the table, I know you're going to get these results. And if you're confident, your client is going to be more confident. If you are tailoring your program, your services to meet that specific need, that one issue that they are addressing, I can promise you, you are not going to have any issues getting clients because everyone will be trying to figure out how they can work with you. Everyone will be focused on how do they become part of your program because they know that you are the bomb. They know that you've been able to get transformation for so many people. They know this. And so because of that, they're going to be looking for ways that they can work with you. While most coaches are out there chasing clients, I want you to be out there attracting clients. I want you to be focused on how do you bring your clients to the table? How do I put out my marketing message? How do I put out information that's going to attract people to me? How do I niche down and become a specialist in this niche or industry so that I don't have to chase clients? Because people who don't do this, what they're out there doing is they're chasing clients. They're waiting for somebody to send them a DM or they're waiting for somebody to get on their list so they can spam the hell out of them. You don't want to be that coach. You want to have a business where you are in demand. People are waiting to work with you that your name constantly comes up in conversations, even when you're not there. You want to be the coach that everyone wants to work with because coaches like that, they stay busy, right? They stay busy. They stay paid. They're not dealing with any of those issues. They don't have any of those problems because they are clear on how to get their message across. They're clear on who their ideal client is. They're clear on how to drill down into their niche. And they put all of that into their program so that they can facilitate the transformation process for anyone who wants to work with them. And that is how you make money. That is the riches in the niches. That is how you get paid consistently by transforming lives for others, by transforming their business, by helping them achieve the one thing that they maybe thought was unachievable before. That's what you do. It's that simple, y'all. So here's what I want to do. Next week, we're going to shift some things around. So next week, I I don't want to go back into niches. I want to kind of change things up a little bit. So next week, what I want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit about structuring your program in a way of branding it. So I know last week, a uh, week before maybe, no, it was last week. All right. So now last week we talked about, you know, group programs and the importance of, you know, how to have one in order to be able to leverage your time and money. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how you can brand your group coaching program, how you can use testimonials in order to be able to get results. Some of the things that you really need to do in order to be able to get in front of people in a different way. If you go to my website right now, which is pampeebles.com and and that's two E's, P-E-E-B-L-E-S, not Pebbles, which is P-E-B-B-L-E-S. It's P-E-E-B-L-E-S. Like you needed to know that. But I want you to look at on my website and go to the praise page and you will see story after story after story after story of women that I have worked with that I have helped that I have helped make five figures who have been struggling in their business who've been able to make six figures and who have been able to generate seven figures in their business and we have consistently done this and the reason why is because I use that to brand myself, to bring other people into my business. I use it as an example to show you what's possible for you. I use it because I want people to be inspired by the results, especially if they've been trying really, really hard to build their business. I want to make sure that they understand, listen, this person was where you're at. This is not impossible. It's definitely possible. But you need to have a blueprint. You need to have a plan. You need to have a coach who's going to walk you through it and be honest with you and tell you, hey, your program sucks. We need to make some changes. They're going to be honest and tell you that, you know, you need to put in some more work. You need to dig a little deeper. You need a little bit of transformation yourself before you worry about transforming someone else. So you want to make sure that you are taking the time to really get to know yourself as a coach as you're focusing on building your business. Because once you know who you are and what you bring to the table and you can communicate that to your clients in a way that no one else is doing, you will have a stellar business and you will be able to scale without issue. Next, we were going to talk about some branding and how you use testimonials to brand yourself and how you use testimonials to further your credibility, to attract more clients to you and how you are able to use this to be able to build your brand and scale your business. So guys, I will see you next week. Thanks for hanging out with me. 
Hey, are you ready to get started building your own seven-figure coaching empire and want to learn how you can skip the initiation phase? Well, since you're one of my listeners, I'm going to hook you up. Then I'm going to remove the veil and share what it takes to start generating 10K or more per month as a coach. Even if you're brand new, I'm going to give you VIP access to my brand new five-day training system that will show you how to build, brand, and launch your own group coaching business while also showing you how to generate your first first 10k. Now you may be wondering, what can I possibly learn in just five days? Well, the answer is, trust me, a whole lot. We're going to dive deep. I'm not holding nothing. And you'll get daily lessons, inspiration, and even some homework too. I want you to walk away with a plan to profit and profit big time. So are you ready? Well, I hope so, because it's about to go down. Just head over to www. 5daycoachingchallenge.com to get started.